Hi everyone, this is tap number 13. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Buzzard. Oh, I'm Jeff Floyd Funga. Roger Clark, at Roger Clark on Twitter. Roger just dropped his phone. <laughs> Should we try again? No. <laughs> oh. I was, I'm just making light conversation. Well, you have to I, introduce yourself. I'm Dalton Runberg. Nobody AKA, dro- nobody AKA, AKA, the... AKA Blue Chaos, Blue Chow. There you go. You gotta get the brand. Frost Phoenix. Oh. Uh, I... was... What my original name? Oh, Frost was. Phoenix. Yeah, NYX at the end. That was that's pretty sick. That was ITG one, and then ITG two. I changed it. We were just talking about shuffle dancers and how it had many names before, and little <laughs> did we know that Dalton also had many names before. So stylize yeah. your name with just what, a bunch of stuff. What was like? What's your earliest like internet? School? Buzzard. I've had Buzzard since yeah. I was twelve years old. Yeah, he he, he's on brand for he's been on brand for over half his life. Oh yeah. man, I'm I'm very jealous. That's incredible consistency. Yeah. Like even yes. even like email address. Yeah, my first email address was buzzard at excite oh, Can man. we still email you at that address? No, I think excite is is long gone. Oh, uh, uh, it's not very exciting. Did you ever have a hot <laughs> hotmail? I got it. Uh, no, I didn't. No, I had excite, and then I had blue line, uh, then I had cox.net. Then I had Gmail, and I was one of the beta invitees of Gmail. Same here. Back when it was closed beta. Wow. Ooh, early adopters. Yeah. yeah, I actually knew somebody. I was, I was like, very young, like 13 years old, and I knew somebody that worked at Google. Oh. They gave me a Gmail invite. Yeah, I got Roger Clark at Gmail, and that's a pretty generic name. You should have so gotten I'm just Roger. Here. You beat that the real estate guy. Yeah. <laughs> no Drano? No, I, I, I had... No, I didn't have that at Gmail. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I used, I used to be known as Drano in the Ohio community. Uh, and then I moved here, and there was another Drano, much younger. So I, I decided to change to to, to using, your using my name. real name. But, That's but like, like super meta. Like even even like D, like before DDR, like embarrassing screen names. I, I was had, that I had I had Kirby Kid two three two. Before Drano, I was Liquid Plumber. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Jeff's the only one who hasn't talked yet. Oh, I mean, I've had I've had a ton over the years. I've had ICNH, which I've since retired. IHCN, IHCNH. Insert creative name here, which is awful. Um, I went by DDR Master Threeer or DDR Master Seven. I was like my RuneScape name was DDR Master Seven. Wow. And then before that, I was I went by Skullman Seven Four Three One. Skullman. <laughs> What, what's the significance of 7431? There's just numbers. No. Oh. I, I presume that 7,430 other people. Other people. I always man. wonder how that works. I, you see, well, you a s- lot of times there's some services where you type it. If there's a conflict, it'll just generate a random number that it puts. Oh, no. This was this was like before was... they were smart enough to try that. Mm. And I played. I was playing Mega Man Battle Network 2, I think, for the Game Boy Advance, and there's a Skull Man, and I, and I, like, I like Skull Man. Actually, to tie it back to DDR, this is one of the things that I noticed about the DDR community, at least that I came from in Phoenix, which is that everybody called each other by their handles. Nobody was calling each other by their real names. And then Facebook ruined it. And Facebook ruined that, it, that's, yeah. a, that's about when people started, when people moved from, like, AIJ and, like, DDR Freak and ITG Freak to Facebook, yeah. and, like, that's where a lot of stuff... You started connecting actual names with people, and so you just call people by their actual name instead of their handle. Yeah. But was it the same case for you guys? I in think your, so. In your communities, everybody yeah. said their handles? Oh, the, no. No? On the East Coast, I think we... I feel like I, I called people by their real names, mostly. Mm. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if that... Like, I think it was more of a coastal thing. Is that? Does that it, sound right? Yeah. It's possible. I mean, Oh god, it's so long ago. Arizona's I mean, definitely like so, southwest. I think I think it matters if your if your handle was more of like a nickname rather than like something really cumbersome. That's true. Like yeah. buzzard, like is it flows off the tongue? Yeah, we have or like we had a guy who went by Jet, and like his actual name was like Jarrett or something. Like he it's just like Jet is just a nickname. Well, the really funny thing was because uh, you know for like the. Um, High scoreboard, I guess. Everybody had to pick four character names. Uh, so yeah. there, was, there was a lot of... There was one guy that, I know that was Sped, S-P-E-D. <laughs> there was, uh, another guy, his initials were... His, his name was Matt Van Vliet, and he was like MCVV, but we called him MCV Squared, which I thought was cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he was... Uh... He was big on N and R. I remember oh. the, his N and R scores way back in the day. Yeah, N and R being a very old school DDR score tracker. Yeah, for those uh, unacquainted. Somebody should make a new one. Yeah, he I was agree. definitely the best person in the area that I uh, started playing. I think. Um, but yeah. Anyway, we, we were talking about we could talk about handles all day. <laughs> um, so the news that we wanted to talk about today was uh, uh, Bimani Style picked up a tweet right from Konami. 
Yeah, um, Konami posted a certain tweet. I mean, like, many people have covered it, I think. Monsa yeah. Just kind of, like, helped with some translation stuff. Yeah, so the, the big news, in case you haven't heard, is um, there's kind of a push to for the next version of Beat Mania, which is called uh, Cannonballers 2DX25, um, to sort of get more involved at, in, as, like, an eSport. Um, they're, they're doing a, something similar to, I guess, what Chunithum is doing, where they're allowing people to, like, record... Or no, actually, it's not Chunithum, it's Mai Mai. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so Mai Mai has, like, built-in cameras inside the arcade machines, um, and, like, people can record their performance and, like, upload it straight to Nico Nico Duga or uh, YouTube. Actually, I don't even know if it supports YouTube. But, Probably not. Doesn't um, Pump It Up do this now, too? Pump It Up has a camera. They have a webcam, but they, I think it just, like, takes pictures of you, like, uh, you, like, get a score and you can take it, like, have your face. Gotcha. I don't know. And a lot of places apparently are very upset about that. Which actually is interesting. I think, like, a lot of tape and busters were... Like covering the camera, where they were Dave like busters. I think oh. so. I'm mm-hmm. not sure. Disabling it. Yeah, I think. I mm-hmm. don't know. There, there was some talk about like some chain not picking it up mm-hmm. because they were concerned about privacy. Is that the new LX cabs? Yeah, yeah the brand new yeah. cabs. Yeah, the brand new no. cabs have it have built into the top. Yeah, just put a sticky note. Over I mean, yeah, it, like... exactly. But like that's actually surprising that an American chain would do it because uh, it's uh, Asian culture definitely emphasizes privacy a lot more. Than yeah, American which is really cultures. interesting. I, maybe maybe it wasn't. I'm not, I may be misquoting. But yeah. uh, like back when people were wondering, I think if Dave and Buster's was going to pick up uh, Prime, because like I don't think many of them have upgraded to Prime Two. Not Dave yeah. and Buster's. Yeah, round, round one, one has though. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. But anyway, I think that that uh, the reason why we want to talk about this was because it kind of looks like a a trend maybe of uh, rhythm games kind of trending towards a maybe an esports or a more a more sort of global globally recognized. Um, genre of, of gaming. Yeah, which I think it's pretty exciting. There was a lot of talk on Twitter, um, like when the announcement came out. Some people saying that like it's not actually a huge deal. Like people are reading into the article too much. So that's, some people think that. Mm-hmm. Some people think like, oh, Konami can't. Like it's not actually going to be able to push this into esports territory for any number of reasons. I've heard every reason under the sun as to why people think it won't work. And then other people are, like, very excited about it, or they have high hopes for it, or um, they're sort of speculating on what it means. Like, there's, like, apparently new hardware that's coming to support this. It may be some sort of built-in capture system. It may be a hand cam, um, because that's, like, you commonly see in 2DX videos, um, like, someone tries to get the line out of the cabinet, and then usually you have, like, the people's hands. Uh, Just like in DDR, you kind of want to see their their footwork. Um... So it's like, a, and there's like a lot of actually very um, prevalent play styles. Uh, in fact, more so in 2DX, I think, than DDR, because you have so many different ways. You have 10 fingers and seven keys plus the turntable. Mm-hmm. So you have a lot of different ways to position your hands and fingers in such a way that you can get the best score. Yeah. Whereas DDR is much more kind of direct of like, yeah, there's crossovers and you can kind of cheat them. But for the most part, you're limited by like how fast your feet can move from one panel to the other. So Whereas, people are talking about techniques in 2DX a lot more. Yeah, yeah, so I think like having the hand cam is very important, because yeah. it lets you see how people do crazy patterns. Especially with Sound Voltex, I think. Sound yeah, Voltex I think the same thing happens with Sound Voltex. Um, so it's interesting, um, like, I thought, like, one thing that we could sort of, like, query the panel right now is just, like, do you think this will work? Like, do you think that um, Konami, let's say that they throw a bunch of backing behind this concept is there a chance that 2dx makes it into a sort of a prominent esports um like like with this not, maybe not in the same league as league of legends or dota yeah. or overwatch now has its own league i think unfortunately i'm gonna have to say no yeah and uh the reason why is because i think that that what makes esports a, a big deal is the sponsorships and like advertising and and that sort of thing and like what I'm noticing from from my uh, admittedly admittedly limited exposure to esports um, is that the advertisements t- tend to be like for gaming related products and like that's true in yeah. the gaming spheres like gaming chairs get, like special mice special keyboards and I'm not sure if this kind of stuff appeals to rhythm gamers uh, especially DDR players I think what can you sell a DDR player food T- food yeah Picari drinks sweat? uh yeah maybe but. I don't know. It's like, could you could you convince someone that by drinking Picari Sweat they'll become a better DDR player? I mean, we've talked before about you know energy drinks and caffeine and stuff. And you, if you ask a lot of people online, like they have 
they have opinions about diet, what you should and shouldn't eat if you're exercising. So I think, at least with DDR, I don't know about 2DX, like, what could you market to 2DX players? Um, because, I mean, of course, they're all also gamers, too. And they might like the sponsorship from, from gaming companies, but it wouldn't necessarily have anything to do with 2DX. Mm-hmm. I think I think with DDR, the possibility is maybe a little bit better there, because there's clothes... There's yeah. uh, shoes, there's food, and there's drinks, and that's at least more than 2DX would have. Actually, I just had an idea that I thought was kind of interesting, is why not sell the music? Like, wouldn't it be interesting if, if the, I, I guess, uh, Konami already kind of has a music label sort of thing? It's like the... Um, they have Konami style. Konami style, yeah. and, and also, uh, what, what's the, oh, Beat Nation? Right? Yes, yeah, Cyber Beat Nation, that stuff, yeah. yeah. And wouldn't it be interesting if, like, if uh, they used the esports platform as, as like, a platform to sell music? Like, it, I mean, I think, in general, it would be really nice if Konami put all their stuff on streaming platforms or iTunes. Yeah. They're getting better. They're getting better. There's, like, yeah. Copula is on the U.S. iTunes store. Oh, really? Soundtrack, yeah. yeah. It's, some, of the, some of the tags are wrong. Um, <laughs> they're not perfect, yeah. but uh there is a more of a push to to make the music oh, that's more great. available that's good um this is the one thing i think you could sell ddr players because like we all love the music and we'll listen to it outside of the game so but it's it's not just about ddr players is that that the reason why i don't think that it would work especially for 2dx is that it's it's such a niche thing that like outside of people who are really serious about it and especially outside of japan like i don't know how big the esports scene is in japan um but like the average american even average american gamer isn't gonna watch 2dx competitions like an average american gamer may be able to understand an overwatch game because it's something they're relatively familiar with like it's true it's such a it's such a much bigger thing that and like you said getting independent investors outside of konami to invest in teams or individual individual players um it's just, I don't think it's going to happen. I think DDR, from a, a spectator's point of view... Um, it's more interesting it's than more, It's more interesting to the common person. It's much more, uh, like, ubiquitous. Like, people know what DDR is. Like, It's more head-to-head, too. I feel like 2DX is more, like, people... I, I don't think even in competitions people are even playing together. Well, it's because... It's like, the side preferences. Yeah, and... well, because of which side the turntable is on. Right. Yeah, is, yeah so... I mean, scoring-wise, DDR and 2DX, I mean, just because you're not playing at the same time, I mean, you're still comparing one score to the other. Yeah, but that makes it less interesting to spectate. To watch, yes. Okay, and so, w- go on, Delm. I'm just, no, I have okay. a lot of things to say. No, go for it. So, I want to, first of all, I, would, I just want to, like, preface this by saying, like, I, I want to play a little bit of a devil's advocate here, um, because I do, not because I, like, I don't actually think, in specifically in 2DX's case... That it can make it into giant esports. I think DDR is more suited for that, and I would like to talk more about that in a couple minutes. Um, but I do want to like throw out just some like counterexamples, other things so we can understand like some of the pitfalls. Like, well, you're, you were very right in saying like like for example, Acer is marketing or like they're sponsoring League of Legends right now, yeah. and they're trying to sell their monitors and their computers and stuff like that. And yes, there's not like a a direct one-to-one with 2DX. You can't sell people a monitor to play 2DX with unless you're talking about Infinitos, the home version, which we're going to ignore. I, I don't think that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, soccer or something has sponsorships for everything. They have sponsorships for airlines that show up on at the side of baseball games. Yeah. Like, does something necessarily need to be tied to the game for it to be, like, for a sponsor to come in? I Coke, think for, for niche things Yeah, for, or for in, for the initial sponsorships. Yeah. I, yeah. To, to help get it. The reason why soccer can get away with that and baseball and football is because there's already so many people, common people, that that it's worth it to advertise to that broad of an audience. Yeah. But, like, if you're advertising, it, you know, esports is still relatively small. Yeah. That you're really only advertising to a very narrow demographic. Yeah, I've, uh, so, I've noticed this a bit with professional uh, pool and professional poker. It's, uh, the advertisements are a lot more targeted towards those people. Yeah, and, and even, even tennis. Uh, yeah, even tennis, um, yeah. I mean, there's some lifestyle things in there, like uh, sports, like golf, that tend to have a, a richer, uh, like, like 
leisure lifestyle. Well, you get, you get yeah, the, exactly. You get the like, things you drape across your shoulder. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, but you get you get watches and you get like yeah. jaguars, like expensive cars and things like that. Um, but you know, baseball, football, basketball, you get much more simple, broad things. Yeah. Well, I mean that that opens up a lot of possibilities for advertising for something like 2DX where rhythm gamers are also generally just gamers. That's true. And like why couldn't like Atlas or Square Enix or something advertise some stuff on, you know, the the 2DX championship or whatever. Do you yeah. think rhythm gamers are gamers? I think so. I, I definitely think so. At I mean, least... I don't know I don't know very many who aren't. I know maybe a few who aren't. I I maybe maybe you and Charles don't play that many like mainstream video games but yeah i thought i thought you and i were both kind of like mostly just ddr well now he's playing persona but i mean i'm I'm playing persona 5 mario odyssey i just played sonic mania and it i don't know it's like do you do you drink mountain dew and eat doritos as well i I ate some doritos on the way here Uh. salsa verde flavor (laughs) (laughs) smells like a gamer to me but you know what i mean like they're like i don't disagree i think like demographics are definitely smaller but i don't necessarily think that like if anything, I think the price that just like influences the price. Like if you're mark if if a hundred million people watch the World Cup, I have no idea if that number is accurate or not. Then if you're an, if you're an airline, you're United Airlines, and you advertise at the World Cup, like it's going to be a certain price for that hundred million viewership. If there's only ten thousand people watching KAC, then you just like I know it's not a like you don't divide yeah, it yeah, evenly, yeah. but like I don't see why you wouldn't just pay less for a smaller demographic. I don't see how like the product itself would actually matter. Yeah, I like, mean you'd probably get like like podcast advertiser tier products like uh, Blue Apron and yeah. And, I'm just, and, 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 I'm just saying, still fine and, though, you know. And well, I mean you know, but it's possible. Like I just I just want to throw out the idea yes. that like it's possible. And about the head to head thing, this is something that I keep hearing from from naysayers and. There are so many cases where, like, there's not an actually a head-to-head match going on. Like, even in 2DX's case, where, like, someone plays, then steps off, and someone else plays golf, like, snowboarding That's stuff, true. like, or, like, the, it, the ski, like, it, the ski, ski long ski, jump, yeah. whatever, I don't know what it's called. But, like, you look at the Olympics, and, like, half of it is people just doing a certain, like, performance-based thing. Yeah. But, and but if you also think about it, the most successful and popular sports are the ones that are head-to-head. However, that doesn't mean that... Like first of all, I think DDR could be expanded to be more head to head. But even if even if it weren't, like you take the sports that Jeff just mentioned, and like maybe they're not the most popular, but they still exist. Oh and yeah, like, definitely. They're at the Olympics. There are people out there who are like so into like track and field or like snowboarding events like this that they're 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 going to get excited like when they see the next person come on and then beat the last person by a slight amount. It's the, yeah. there's. There's enough people with that to make it viable to put it at the Olympics. Yes, right. mm-hmm. for sure. You know? I'm not, and like, this is all to say, again, I'm just sort of playing devil's advocate, not saying that any one of these things mean that DDR could make it or 2DX could make it. But I think, I think there are a lot, like, the, the reasons that matter are like that it's, there's a very small community, there's limited access. I think, like, that's the bigger thing. Like, you can't, you can't look at anything besides, like, golf. And say like like there's a basketball court everywhere. If you want to just pick up basketball, you probably can go to your local, you go to your local gym or you go to your local like rec center or something. It's not start... owned by one corporation. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like even pinball. We think about pinball and how big those tournaments are in comparison to DDR. Yeah. How like that's kind of you know I, I wouldn't say it's an esport. It's a very physical thing still. It, but it's also very ubiquitous too. Yeah. Like, but like you can just go into stuff. bars and yeah. play if you want to get better. It's so hard right now with. DDR and especially 2DX in America, at least. Absolutely. You can't just walk into Dave and Buster's and play 2DX. You have to go to one of the like very few round one locations, and then you have a chance. Or some weird pirated arcades. Yeah, exactly. But so, even then, you're not gonna like be on a, a, a. There's there's not the same like qualification for yeah. something like KAC. And so well so, with uh, with esports particularly is that League of Legends you can just play from home whenever you want. Right. Exactly. And you pay yeah. one amount. And you don't pay anything for League of Legends. Well, no, if you don't but want I mean, to. you you have the upfront cost of your computer. Yes, yes, that's basically, true. and internet, whatever. Yeah. But uh, or you know, for Overwatch, which you do have to pay for. Um, so you, 
it's not the same as going to the arcade yeah. and having to constantly Very spend true. money over and over and over again. Yeah. So that's another barrier to the access. And, and you know, you could play Overwatch until 4 o'clock in the morning yep. in your room, but, you know, arcade closes at midnight. Like That's what I'm saying. Like, I want people, I, I wish people would focus more on that aspect of saying, like, when you say it doesn't work, like, use good arguments to say why it doesn't work, not, like, it's... it. It's not head to head, so it can't work. We have lots of examples of things that aren't head to head but do work. So it's like I don't know. That's just my my. my yeah, I, I think with two DX, like you said, the access thing is 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 really difficult compared to DDR. Um, and I I don't know in Japan. Like I think if we're talking about whether two DX will succeed as an esport in Japan, like that's I think a different although related discussion to whether DDR can succeed as an eSport worldwide. That's true. Um, yes. With 2DX in Japan, at least everyone there can go to the arcade. Yeah. And an arcade is in every town. And, you know, there's like... And if it, there's an arcade, it has a 2DX machine. Exactly. There's not like... There's actually not very many arcades that like have DDR and not 2DX or mm-hmm. something like that. Like 2DX is by far the most popular Konami game Sound Voltex may have now eclipsed it a little bit, but yeah. the 2DX machine came before Sound Voltex, so every arcade just has one. But I think with DDR, like you were talking about accessibility, and I think that the reason, one thing that I always notice whenever I'm talking to people about DDR who don't play it is that they always know what it is. Like a lot of times, I'll I'll be like coming home from the arcade in Uber or something, and. Uh, I actually use Lyft because I don't like Uber, but um, <laughs> thank you. I agree. And I'll, I'll they'll be like, "Why are you so sweaty <laughs> at this mall?" And I'm like, "Oh, it's it's because I was there playing Get Games out Dance of Revolution." My car. They're like, "Oh yeah." I mean, to be fair, there's a Crunch Fitness right True. Like, right next to David <laughs> that's Buster's. My, that's my gym. So, but I'm coming out of David Buster's. <laughs> Man, either, that, the, the, the basketball game was really intense. <laughs> also, does he look like somebody that would go to Crunch Fitness? Hey, uh, Rogers, look at his... He's, he's got shorts for once. He's, he's got some calves. calves. Yeah, he's got the calves. Legs muscle. show something. That's yes. what, um, what I was going to say is that everyone knows what it is, and part of the reason is because they've gone by arcades, but a really major reason is that DDR had home versions in the U.S. for a long time. Yeah. And now there isn't home versions. Yeah. And... I think, like, if Konami wanted to bootstrap DDR into esports territory again, they should just release home versions again. That's true. Just make a home version of DDR Ace for Nintendo Switch or something, like, and break out the soft pads again. People will do it. Yeah. You know? Has has Konami ever released a Konami-branded hard pad, metal pad? There was, apparently, I've seen photos of, like, a limited edition very old, like, arcade-style pad that Konami actually released hmm. uh, in Japan in, like, the early 2000s or late 1990s. So nobody would buy a hard pad, though. And they, they, well, no, no, no people do. I think they would, but they, like... I think something that's very underappreciated about DDR and its success in America was that you bought the game plus the soft pad bundled together. Like, right, right. I got into the game that way. Me too. And I know so many people who did as well. Mm-hmm. Like, if you just did that... You'd get people at least interested enough to the point that they could they eventually say this isn't good enough and I want to be better. It's just like get having a computer that sucks and downloading League and having to play on garbage settings. Yeah. And then eventually you're like, I actually want to see the characters move more than tw- twelve frames a second. Like I want to yeah. get a better computer, and then you break into it that way. Yeah. So still sell it with the soft pad, but I think if they had a metal pad, that that's the thing that so many people ask now is that they want just a affordable it doesn't have to be an arcade pad but like something better than a a soft pad yeah maybe well anyway i think the the strange thing about the the ddr console story is that they they had a good thing going for a long time i think all the way up until you know extreme cs and beyond i guess extreme what came after that extreme 2 came after that and that was one of the best mixes they've had and then supernova came out after that, I think Supernova CS was good. I think it was, too. And then <laughs> Supernova 2 I didn't like, yeah, and after that it kind of got bad. Still approachable. But uh, anyway, I, th- I think like Ultramix and that sort of thing, like yeah. the stuff that came after that was... They started to, to really stray away from like the the core thing that made the game great. They started adding gimmicks and stuff, and it didn't have the soul of DDR anymore. Well, they stopped... Like, Ultramix and the, uh, the Universe series was on Xbox and Xbox 360 and stuff. Yeah. And... That was kind of an offshoot, mm-hmm. and 
so they had like a little bit more like I think it was a little bit more liberal in terms of like direction, like art direction and all these other things. Which and is music, a problem, I think. Yeah, because like no, I, I agree. It, well, stop. It certainly wasn't based on an arcade game. Yeah. Which and I think that that familiarity really uh, took a hit. Like you play Ultramix at home, you play a couple songs, you go to the arcade, and you can't find them. Yeah, and I think that's, that's actually right. a huge issue because that's a good point. how are you gonna like that people? I used to play songs at home. I played Max Two as my first one. Breakdown, Afro Nova, Burning Heat, all these songs. Like, I went to the arcade, and I was like, oh, I know that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even now, I see people at the arcade, uh, you know, new new players, you know, randos or whatever, try and go up and try and find a song on Ace that was from the Max or Max 2 home version era. Yeah, it's not there anymore. Somebody was looking for something the other day. I Crash? Can't, I can't remember. <laughs> no, it, it, you know, it's so one of the, the pop songs in one of the, the Max CS or whatever. Oh, Heaven oh, by CS. DJ Sammy featuring honestly, DJ Sammy and Honestly, Yano featuring it, it might have been. I love that. No, I, I honestly think it was he- Heaven that they were looking for. Or what was the um, Penny Spears song? Toxic. 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 Oh, That's God. Right. Good That's song. a great chart. That's great. Um, but so I had to be like, oh, no, it's not in yeah, this, yeah, this yeah. version. I have that conversation with people a lot. Where's Cartoon Heroes? Where's Butterfly? Well, uh, I mean, I understand, like, it's one thing for licenses to disappear, but you had Ultramix and Universe had some weird, set, like, weird OSTs. Yeah. Weird music selection. Like, I, but the thing, Outer Limits? The thing is, like, I think music selection aside, that's not even what the beginners cared about. Like, they didn't care that much about the music and, like, whether or not it was at the... Well, maybe they do care, like, once they start playing at the arcades, they cared that if it was at the arcade. But I thought the strange thing was, like, with Ultramix, they start adding the stories. Like, there was, like, the storyline and all that stuff. I don't know. And then, a- after that, it, it just started getting really weird, where, like, you know... <laughs> Um, was it the Wii version where you had to use your hands too? Well, extreme. You could turn it off. Extreme. Yeah, but... Extreme CS had that too. The the eye toy, the PS2 eye toy. That's right. Yeah. So, but like, yeah, you could turn those. I mean, I understand. Like, you have to. Add, they were trying to add some spice into the games that's, to make them a little bit. That's what killed it. I think. I don't know. Like, I think. I think what killed it was them not making it anymore. Well, that too. But they, they they consistently came out with bad mixes with weird like soundtracks that were like just. Good enough for you to like play it very casually, and no way like I liked Max Max Two's song list because you were able to sort of break it like here's all the songs you know. There's Heaven and there's Ghosts. Not that I I guess no one knows Ghosts. Yeah. Uh, uh, like Days Go By was in oh yeah or something. Uh, Busy Child. Oh yeah. yeah. Some good stuff in there. Some... But then like also the Konami Originals just existed. The Konami Originals that existed in that mix that if you could find that same mix or close one, Mm -hmm. you could play those songs. I just think it's ridiculous that, like, most of the song list in the later games was not like that at all. Like, they they are like, oh, yeah, we already put Afro Nova in the last one, so (laughs) we'll add, like, Toe Jam by Big Idea. And you're like, what the fuck is that? (laughs) Like, is this in the game? No, it's not going to be in any other mix than this thing right here. It was just a miracle that some stuff from Universe 3 crossed over into, like, X2. Anyway. Yeah, I would love to see uh, Dance Dance Revolution Ace... Switch version with a soft pad. That's it. Yeah, it, no gimmicks. It no... seems like they could totally do it. Um, if you're listening, Konami, please make this. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it would go a long way. Just, just maybe we're just a couple old guys, but I feel like you know that was instrumental in getting us into DDR. No, yeah. you, you got to have that. Like, yeah. like Dalton was just talking about. You can, you can play League or Overwatch at home, and then it makes the game relatable when you're watching the the. The crazy good people play. Yeah, it. totally. Because yeah. you're like, oh, they're doing the same thing as me. This is why esports is popular. What and and why it's such an amazing phenomenon is because you know, like, you can't. I mean, you can go to like a basketball court and play basketball, but it's not like NBA regulation. You know, like, you, mm-hmm. and you're not going to be playing with other people who are like, it's not easy to play with other people around your skill level, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but with a game like Overwatch or League of Legends. You're automatically matched up with people who are around your skill level, and you can do it whenever you want on your own time. And and you're playing within this exact same parameters. With the, exactly, you're you're doing this the same thing that the people who are winning tournaments, like world tournaments, are doing. Yeah, and part and, of the appeal to like early home versions of DDR too, I thought, was playing with your friends. Because like it's you're less likely to go to the arcade, I think, and play with your friends because you're like on display. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, so many, I mean, basically, by not having home versions, Konami's ensuring that there's not going to be a new generation of players of DDR Pretty much. players. Yeah, that because so many of us started at home, and then and and I hear this all the time from girlfriends or friends or whatever that you oh you want to play with me at the arcade? And they're like, no, no, no. Like I, 
I'll play yeah, at it's home. Like too embarrassing. Yeah, it's yeah. Like... like I, I, and so many people play at home until they're good enough and they feel yep. confident enough to play in the arcade. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I hear countless stories too of like it, it's just like a good party thing too. It's like you get yeah. everyone it infects the party. Everybody gets yeah. involved. It's yeah. like a fun thing to do. Now everybody's just getting drunk, probably. Yeah. College I mean, students. Well, I mean, I think that's just what right? happens when when they when you get old. My friend um, was that's actually. What happens when the vacuum of DDR is created? <laughs> <laughs> My friend was just telling me today that uh, she had a flu clinic at her work, uh, and they had set up a DDR pad. Whoa. Uh, on a console or something i don't know i didn't get the details but like outside of the flu clinic for some reason but it was like right above her office so she just hears stomping that's interesting but i mean you know it's it's the portability and like the the like you could go to a party i yep. mean that's what like guitar hero rock band was for a while like you'd go to parties and like totally people would that's, be like, what hey. would, that's what all parties were yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. Rock, like that's i had true. two birthday parties that were just like hey come play rock band yeah they were not very exciting parties but <laughs> i had a b-money club at my high school and uh, we basically just played DDR at school, and it was very infectious. Yeah, that, that's how you infect people. It was awesome. Yeah. So, taking this now more towards the esports direction, like, so we, we've we've sort of I think agreed on it. We got come to a consensus that like we would like home versions to come back to bring the new blood to make the game like let's say let, we're moving towards DDR being an esport. Like, yeah. So. If because if this is broadcast on Twitch or something, you know, you needs to be relatable, and DDR is the most relatable of all the music games because it's had actually had a U.S. presence for a long time. But is there any like what else needs to happen? Is there like are there timing changes? Are there scoring changes? Like what what make how do you how do you tell someone like you could break into this as an esport? Like sponsorships? What what goes into it? I think all those things would help. I think. It could act. I think it could actually work and maybe reach like a popularity of like maybe around like where like some speedrun communities are, just the way that it is. And mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people they when they start talking about the subject, the first thing they go to is the game as it is won't work because X, Y, or Z. And I think that it could because it's it's already a good game, or else we wouldn't be obsessed with it. <laughs> um, and. I think that if you just broaden the the accessibility a little bit, then people would they they would watch it. I think there's a lot of things that you could do, like to make it more head to head. For instance, like you could introduce some less deterministic things into the game. Um, I've thought about like maybe like courses. That would be one one way of doing it, where you could just have a course during a tournament that like is actually you you go to a tournament mode in, in the game and you don't know what's going to happen. Right. And like that, that would be, that could, that could be something or even a mode where it adds mods. You could bring that back. You could Did, bring. Didn't ITG have battle mode? Yeah. Sort of. Well, I mean like that's kind of, when you say like having less or having like more head to head interaction, the first thing I thought was like some sort of battle mode, which no one likes, I think. Yeah. yeah. No, of, like you hit that was a certain super combos mode, and like your opponent's screen gets hit and turn on or something like yeah. that's. That's not the type of game that I would want to play. Yeah, but it could get, you know, noobs to play with their friends. Well, but I, I don't think that's viable for an eSport. Well, that's the thing. is like what what we just sort of... Yeah, like, talking about, I know we're talking about eSports. Well, no, no, no. I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to say is like League of Legends, when you... Like if you play League of Legends casually and then you watch Worlds, mm -hmm. you can still say that's the same game that I play. Mm -hmm. I think that like being able to say that is really important. And if like what you're playing with your friends is like battle mode, but then players like me or Chris or Hudson or other like top players don't want to play with that because it's like BS basically yeah. then you like a casual player wouldn't be able to look up at their screen and say that's the game I play yeah so, so it's using league as an example though mm -hmm. um it was the core game when it started to become an esport years ago correct it was the core what do you mean it, 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 it was they didn't change a whole lot to make it an esport from how it was but since it sure. has reached that level they've kind of gone back and and tweak things like the banning system yeah and, and things like that to make it more so i think as roger said at least initially it would work as is now um you'd have to figure out tournament structure yeah which is oh konami doesn't know konami needs a little bit of a lecture from the arrow panel about <laughs> tournament, yeah, tournament structure. structures <laughs> yes um but like i agree with roger it would work initially as it is now and then you figure out the problems 
that it presents in that, you know, space and then adapt it to that. Rather, yeah, so like, rather what are the problems? Like, what can we identify some problems that make it hard? Besides accessibility. Okay. Yeah, accessibility. Or availability. But, like, from, the, like, a core gameplay perspective, like, is it sufficient to have four arrows and the, the judgments as they are and, like, the pads as they are? Like, is there something that needs to happen in the game, at the game level? I think there, there needs to be a normalization, sort of, of songs of some sort. Because, like, you, you know how we always talk about, you know, uh, you know, sort of, like, uh, accuracy versus stamina, and there's, like, kind of, kind of a lot of different things that you could test skill on with yeah. DDR. Especially when you talk about, you know, the difference between you and Chris. There's, like, we, we can go into a long discussion about that in general. And I think that if you if you can, like, normalize the, like, what what is expected of good players in some way, then, like, that would go a long way to making it a... I think yeah. one, one thing that might hurt DDR's, like, ability to... It, it might hurt it a little bit is the, the skill ceiling. I think with with Ace, they raised it a lot with Marvelous. Yeah, that's part of the problem, and, um, But still, there's I think there's this problem where, like, there's four 19s, mm-hmm. and the 19s, like, no one can really do them that well right now. Yeah. And, like, I think they could if they were forced to do it, um, but they're not really forced to right now. But I, I think, like, that's where the most of the competition would be if if a lot of new people started getting really, really into it. I mean, I that, think... That's basically what happened with ITG uh, Customs, is that so many new people got in and they immediately saw the highest level uh, stuff, stamina or foot speed things, and that was what they went for. Yeah, And right. they went to go play the longest songs or the fastest songs or whatever it was, they're like, I want to pass a 20, uh, ITG 20, rather than I want to quad start nines. Yeah, but people don't do that with DDR, which is, I mean, and it's probably because the 19s are bad. Well, but as Roger said, there's four, five of them. With ITG, there's a lot more on that end. I think what, what, what happened with DDR is like, you have... A lot of players like around my skill level, like like me and James and Dalton, they're like we're 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 kind of like hovering around this this kind of like sixteen you, PFC sixteen PFC kind of, sixteen. Yeah. I think a lot of people are in that range. And like you got to ask, like why is that? Like yeah. why is that where there's so many like good players? Why are they right there and mm. not not just a little bit higher? Yeah, and it's just because the distribution of the difficulties of songs is is the way that it is. Like, mm. if there were like thirty nineteens and like sixty eighteens or something, then I would just be forced to to move my skill up just just to still call myself a good player. And, yeah. e- and even in, in a tournament sense, that those songs would potentially be more likely to come up. That pe- yeah. a lot of people ignore those or don't focus on them as much, it was because, as we talked about in previous episodes, like, there's so few of them that the chances of them coming up in a tournament aren't really that high. And true. where I was going to go with that as well is, like, there there's a lot that you can do, like, playing easy songs, like, you could, like going for accuracy on, like, stuff that isn't hard, but, like, that that's going to be, first of all, it's going to be a little less interesting to watch for the the spectators, and also, like, it starts to become a given at some point, like, with a certain skill level that you're able to do that stuff to a certain degree. Like, mm-hmm. you know, y- y- your skill level is a lot different than Chris's. You're pointing at Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that you you have, like, a very amazing consistency on, like, a huge range of songs. Um, but Chris, like, you, you give Chris a 13, and, you know, he's going to get... Two or three perfects, yeah. and that's like, that's pretty close to zero. It's, and he yeah. he's also got a shit ton of MF, MFCs too. Yeah. Same thing with Hudson. The Femmes could do it, I'm sure, as well. I think that this this kind um, of emphasizes a point too about like reward, and like I think with with something like uh, Overwatch and something like the the reward is like the the more players that you kill um, at once in like a short amount of time. That's like there's a bigger reward, and that's exactly what the pro players are doing, uh, as opposed to like DDR, where it's like it's it's a more it's a way way longer term goal of like yeah. getting to an MFCing at like a nineteen. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I I guess it's just it just seems to me like if we want it to be something that's like 
you know, if you take like the the Olympics or something, like reach for the stars. Like, what if DDR was an Olympic sport? They would be playing like you know twenty fives or some shit. You know, <laughs> they, they they wouldn't be they wouldn't be playing thirteens. And like the only way that we can make it like so hard that the, the only way that we, we can make it as interesting as as it needs to be for it to become like a truly like global thing that a lot of people would be interested in, I think is to make it a little bit harder. Hmm. It's interesting. Like I'm wondering about the parallels between like DDR 15 years ago. Like I feel like a lot of us didn't shy away from tens, but maybe, maybe I'm remembering wrong. Like did a lot, did. Of, people, did a lot did. of people just like, there was, to... there were so many people I knew who were like, Oh yeah, I play everything except tens. Mm hmm. I guess, yeah. I, I was like that. I guess that, that does I play about. tens. I, I mean, I was, like, really into Lom and stuff. But, yeah, like, yeah. there's, like, six but, of them. But I guess, like, that is kind of logical that, like, for some reason, people, people tend to, at least in DDR, stay right kind of below the upper, like, the upper echelon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. wherever that upper echelon is, people are just comfortable kind of being, like, right underneath yeah, it. Because you can still feel good. You can still be like, ah, I'm, I'm one of the best in the, in the, in the country, but not... I don't, I don't. I don't have to work that hard. Yeah, but Jeff, you, you've talked about it before that by pushing that difficulty, that the average level of play goes yeah, up. Yeah. Like tens used to be the top, so people stayed under that, and so now like fifteens, which used to be tens, like everybody plays fifteens. Right, but I'm wondering like there's correlation causation stuff going along here. Like there are now far more fifteens and sixteens at like old school tens, ten flashing tens, whatever you want to call them. They are. A lot like their songs are more varied. The charts are more varied. The charts are more interesting, and I'm wondering if that's like if it's the case that there's just more options. Like you don't have to play something that sounds like Max 300 yeah. to play at that level. So do we just need 19s that don't sound like egoism? I, I don't even think that's the case. I think that if there were 30 egoism, scary, like, speed that's, core songs... That's kind of what... That's exactly would, the question I'm asking, yeah. though. Like, is it... Which... What's the reason that people are so comfortable around 15s and 16s? Is it because it's very varied? Or is it because uh, it's people just tend to be right underneath the hardest stuff? I, I really do... I don't think it has anything to do with the availability of 19s. Like, I think... That I, I could play the 19s. Is, like, I like the way that egoism sounds and stuff, but I still choose not to play it. Well, wh- Why is what, that? I, what I'm. Okay, go ahead. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to think. But I, I, I think, I, I think I, it might be because, like, you know, again, going back to the uh, comparing it to, like, Overwatch or something, like, if you're bad at the game, it's there's a negative uh, feedback sort of thing. That so, you, like, if you, you, if you play egoism right now, you might get an 800k or a 700k or something, and you may be like, that's, oh, that's not that's a score good. that I like. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think, like, if it was, if, if DDR was a game where you constantly had to play with other people around your skill level, like what we were talking about with... Well, you, we do, though. Level. That That's, I think that's what I'm saying, is, like, I think that the reason that, like, I'm just gonna be vulnerable and honest here is the, like, the reason I hover around where I am is because I can still feel good about my skill level right. without actually being that good. And I think that if, like, you would probably, I, I can't say this for sure, Why but I think James? that you, James, <laughs> and you, Dalton, like, I think we would all be playing 19s if we were all playing 19. If, <laughs> if, if, no, no, if, if, if we all, no, I understand. If I saw you at Zion or, like, you know, at, like, Dave and Buster's or yeah. whatever, and you're playing egoism all the time, I'd be like, well, I guess I gotta do that now. Well, I, I would like, take that one step further, and I would say that um, if the game worked like this, where, like, if, if I got a score, and then, like, you beat my score, I'm not gonna go, like, ooh, I have to go back and beat him on that exact same song again. I, I would be more like, oh, okay, that's, that's good that he, like, yeah, kind of caught but up. but if it was, like, if it was a bunch of stuff in the same range, like, I know I know yeah. you already do this. Like, we, we yeah. all already do this. Like, I see Dalton's scores, and I'm like... Well, I guess I better go clean up some of these things. Or I see James playing, and he's like doing really well on something. Like, well, I I kind of gotta go crush that. I gotta like, I gotta just, learn that now. Yeah, yeah. But that makes you want to play the same song. Exactly. What, 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 so so you know, what I was saying was like, what if what if I like you know PFC to seventeen, and then you were like, I got a PFC in eighteen, but that's not what happens. No, but if if you PFC to a, a, a bunch of seventeens, I would at least want to get a couple seventeens. It, yeah. it, it it constantly. There, there would just they, be they the, this, like, stair so, climbing. So I think mm-hmm. kind of what would help here, and uh, to answer Jeff's question from 20 minutes ago, um, would be some sort of online ranking system. 
um, like official Konami mm-hmm. ranking system. Up, and we talked about this before in our like wish list of like some sort of. I mean, Overwatch has this. You see people post about it on Facebook, like. Oh, you know, this... I'm Platinum. I'm, I'm, plat- I'm Diamond. This yeah. or, or Hearthstone, for that matter. Like, I'm Legend or, in Hearthstone. Or 2DX, right. actually. Yeah, has down levels. yeah, we talked about that, too. Um, I don't think you were here that episode. But but something like that, yeah. um, to really have, like, a, a tangible goal to reach for, because there's not in DDR. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Like, if I knew that you were, like, you know, number 16 in California or something... Actually, you're probably much higher than that, but... If you were, like, number 8 in California and I was, like, number 10, I would be like, oh, shit. I yeah, mean, that's, but, kind, but, that's but, kind of what GrooveStats was. I mean, yeah. it, and GrooveStats, Groove Stats, which, for those who don't know, was the ITG ranking website. It still is. Um, I mean, it. I would do the math at home to calculate how many, per, like, 0.08% increase in total score across my 113 yep. expert charts that were in ITG2. I would do the math and figure out I need to raise this many song or you know a total of this much to pass the person ahead of me yep. and so i would look at my song list and i would see oh, i haven't updated this score in eight months or like this is really low my relative rank which they also had on group stats yeah relative rank was really good of like oh you know i'm 60th on this but all my other ones i might be you know 30th or something so i'm like i'm relatively not as good at that song yeah and and you did this like Regardless of the difficulty of the songs, right? Typically, yes. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. it helped me because the more difficult songs were where I had the most ground to make up. Mm-hmm. That that it's a lot easier to increase a difficult song by 0.05 than it is a nine that I have it's to one excellent that I have yeah, yeah exactly one or two excellents that you have to go from you know one excellent to zero or two to one or yeah, whatever exactly rather than you know i could play hardcore of the north and like if i have a really good day you know i could increase it by like 0.3 or something and like jump up four spots in the rankings that's like, interesting yeah like i would i was 15 and and had that sort of competitive yeah um, drive in me because of this like listing on groups that i was a group that's admin actually oh, but wow. yeah um <laughs> But, you know, to, to push myself and, and to, like, really introspect on those sort of things. But there's not that. Yeah, rivals, but, rivals aren't the same. And, no, and, but, and it's not even just, not even number rank, like, like, like you said, rank 8 in California, rank 16. It's not even just that, but it's, it's some sort of signifier of the general echelon that you're in. Um, like we said in Overwatch or in... Um, uh, Hearthstone, like yeah, yeah. oh, I'm platinum or at least just, just kind of yeah, being yeah, able yeah, to, the same thing. like being able to see the horizon, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, where... And I need to get this much better to reach this level, right? Yeah. Hey, Konami, if you are listening, that's going to get people to play a lot more too. I remember even just enjoy level. I remember seeing your your purple enjoy level. I was like, shit, I got to play more. <laughs> so I want to get there. Yeah, I don't know. I think that that's all very valid, and I did the same thing with group stats with Technica. Actually, Technica had a pop ranking. Which was, the, it was literally the sum of all of your scores. And so if you didn't play a song on a, the normal chart for something, mm. which was the easiest, uh, you had a score of zero for it. And you could have a score of 300,000 for it. And so it necessitated, if you wanted to be a high up on the pop master ranking list, or the pop ranking list, you had to play every single song on every single difficulty. And that, that surely motivated me. And that's now what I do. I've transferred that, like, care to playing everything into DDR. I noticed. But I can see how it's, like, pretty uninviting to go from no clear lamp on a 17 that's hard and gimmicky mm-hmm. to having, like, just a normal clear lamp. Like, you're just like, okay, I got an 800k on it because I didn't know all the stops. Like, cool. Which is, this is kind of funny, because like, we, we kind of went from talking about we, how we need more hard stuff to almost saying, like, things are too hard. Well... Not too hard, I but... think I think, well, I mean, I definitely agree with Roger, and I, I want to point out that Konami seems to be working on it. You think about how many 18s just got released in Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, that's kind of crazy. Uh, for people who are, like, people who are new to DDR or something, or I guess new to Ace, like, there were, I think, 28 18s in everything before Ace. And there are now how many? There are like 42 or something? Mm-hmm. Like, no, that, maybe that's too high. But like, most of the extra exclusives were 18, like, or they're at like 16, 17s, and 18s, and a lot of them were 18s. Mm-hmm. And so, 
I think there is a lot to like there there's there's work being done there, but there there could be more. And that's why I, like a lot of the 18s are actually on the easier side of 18s, which is good because it helps you break into the really really hard yeah, ones. Yeah, it feels way better to me to play Come to Life than it does to play I don't know, 888 or something. Yeah, exactly. You know? But I think there's still more work to be done Definitely. there. And maybe that's just the next step. Like because maybe that's just how we played 15s and 16s. Like like you guys have gotten into that groove because there are easy 15s and middle of the road 15s and hard 15s. And the same thing with 16s. 17s? Is they're start, all kind of hard. They're all kind of hard. <laughs> and not, like, I think of, like, Possession or Koisudu to be, like... Koisudu, I think, is a really good example. Like, it's streamy, it's dense, it's long, but it's a, and it's a 17. But it's like, oh, I can do this. Yeah. Whereas, or even Triple like, Counter. Yeah, stuff like that. You know, like, I, they're working on it. Yeah. But, like, I guess a lot of this is just something that has to come over time. So maybe we're playing a little bit of a waiting game. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I'd like to see them improve their their online, like, the e-amusement website, too. Yeah, like, I think that's... Like, exactly. That's, like, like first them. step. First if step. they could just make, like, a nice looking... recall or group <laughs> stats or... And be able to access it from the machine. That would be nice. That'd be really, really cool. Just, like, be able to see the ranking. Yeah. Make it a track screen, you know? So I, would, I, would just love to, I would just love to see, like... <laughs> Like if I was challenger in yeah. League of Legends, I would like be losing my shit right now. <laughs> if I was, I'm like I'm pretty much challenger in in uh, Dance Dance Revolution. Yeah, I really yeah, just I mean, want if like they, if they had an MFC leaderboard. Oh yeah, I would be like, on that shit. Yeah, I, I would just be you'd grinding. have to play all the stuff yeah. that you don't like playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fun. So yeah. anyway, we're getting towards the uh, end of the show, so I thought we move to questions now. Lightning um, round. Yeah, lightning round. So in, in no particular order, I'm just gonna start picking off some uh, some questions. So uh, Jess or D R Croissant asks. Uh, how do you feel about DDR never having a strict theme in every installment, unlike Poppin' and 2DX? Would you like to see it happen? I think this is a great question because I was just reading about the um, the Cannonballers theme, which I think looks really awesome. And uh, I, I actually always look forward to every installment of um, 2DX because they do such a good job of the theme. And uh, I think every version of DDR does kind of have a theme, but... It's not it's a not... theme, it's a color scheme and like yeah. a general aesthetic, but it's not like... It's not like, oh, Cenobuzz, ninjas, yeah, or like cannonballers, true. cars, copula, trains? Or <laughs> Poppin, uh... Poppin had yeah. airplanes. Oh, I love that one, yeah. <laughs> Poppin Cafe, too. That's yeah, I mean, they're more clearly defined themes and thematic elements, and yeah. the, the characters have specific costumes for them. Like, I would love to see it in DDR. I don't know why they wouldn't do that. I don't know if it has to be reflected in the name, hmm. necessarily. DDR Ace could have been poker themed like, <laughs> well no ace is talking about like like ace combat like the kind of it's you have like you're flying in a plane oh, in ace i guess you're flying through the clouds you have like the extra savior thing is like a lock-on yeah, target like, i've literally never thought like even thought of that though. it's 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 as close as you can like ace is actually one of the more themed games oh yeah def- compared to definitely like supernova was kind of themed or like, like supernova space. 2 is kind of th- themed around space yeah. yeah. Planets, maybe? <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of like, there's a devil zookin or robos. I don't know why. Yeah. I, I yeah. would love to see, you know, like, more more of the characters kind of being incorporated into, into DDR. Like, right now, they're, like, background characters, and Ace has those awesome pants that the, I want so bad. The Rage so bad. Freeze Arrow pants? Yeah. Uh, the Rage, yeah, I'm sorry. Rage has the Freeze Arrow pants that I want so bad. Um, I hope Emily can make those, actually. That'd be amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd love to see. I, I think that that's... The, the the themes kind of uh, uh, contribute a lot to the culture of the game. It's like 2DX, I feel like it, it contributed a lot to that. I'd like to see that happen to DDR, too. I wonder if there's, like, a bit of a cheese factor, though. Like A little bit. I, I mean, it, it's certainly more divisive. Uh, That's true. There's going to be a lot of people that say, I hate it. Yeah. But people hated Copula because of yellow and minions. It was but, orange, sure. but... What? Copula was amazing. Copula's yellow. I, yellow. I guess I'm thinking of the... the their uh, what you call it? Their, have some, their some, outfits are yeah, some of the kind. Yeah, like they, well, it's like the, it's the resort anthem girls, and yeah. they like orange and yellow. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, so I like this question too. Um, Astral wall projection. Astrofaris. Yes, Astrofaris asks, uh, "How much do you think Bimani has influenced your taste in music? Are there <laughs> genres that you wouldn't have gotten into or enjoyed otherwise?" Who boy? Well, we talk about this a lot because <laughs> um, I don't know. Like I think the music in especially early versions of DDR, was very unusual. It's like not, you know, Euro... It, actually, he followed it up by saying, um, I really don't think I'd be able to tolerate a lot of Eurodance if it weren't for DDR. Yep. Eurodance, uh, J-pop, Eurobeat. Eurobeat uh, weird, whatever egoism is. 
Yeah. Um, I probably wouldn't be listening to DDR like Speedcore speed core or um, uh, like just techno. A lot of like just e- whatever, like literally EDM, basically. Yeah, like I don't like. I think it's an understatement to say that DDR has influenced our music. I think yeah, taste. I think it's absolutely one hundred percent. Like everyone I've talked to, it's a, a very important part of their, their yeah, lives. Definitely, yeah. definitely for me. I I listened to electronic music before DDR, but I, I feel like. One thing that DDR did was it taught me about genres of electronic music that mm-hmm. I didn't before. Before DDR, I kind of just like lumped it all together. Yep. And after DDR, I was like, oh well, okay. Like here's like a drum and bass song, or here's like a hardcore song, yeah. or, yeah. or whatever. And I didn't. It, it helped me with a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Um, also, it made me like a lot of different kinds of music that I didn't like before. Like if you take something like I don't know. A recent example is like Hillbilly Shoes. Oh, God. And, you know, you can say what you want, but it's like, it's a successfully marketed song. It's like popular, or it was, and um, until the guy died. <laughs> in the, well, in the 90s. <laughs> it's like it's like 20 years old at yeah, this but, point. But it is? Yeah. But it's still, that. though. Like, That's weird. That's really weird. If, if I think about, like, you know, stuff that was in Extreme, like Jet World, for instance. Like, Jet World, if I had heard Jet World before I started playing... Would I would I like that? I, I don't, I'm not sure if that's the case. I, but. See, I judge a song, or not completely, but I judge a song based on how cool I think the steps would be. It's like, like DDR has ruined me, and I think everybody that, like, you can't hear a song, even if it's, like, a stupid acoustic guitar song. I disagree with this, but I know where you're going. W- without, like, thinking of a step chart for it, or, like, tapping your feet. Like... It's true. That it's just so ingrained that... And, but I, I, if I'm like, man, that song would make a cool step chart. Like I'm more inclined to like that song. Yeah. Even if it's not something I necessarily otherwise would. I don't know. I, I've like separated, especially recently, like a lot of my music tastes are kind of going in a different trajectory from DDR. Like I love all, like a ton of the music that's in DDR, but I also can listen to songs and like not think of the step chart for it and kind of appreciate it for more nuanced things that like, cause not everything should be stepped. And I think if I were to think that, oh, like, the steps tie in with how good the song is, then I'd be ignoring a large portion of, like, what good stuff is. Like, we were just listening to Odyssey music, Super Mario Odyssey music. Yeah. I mean, and, I like, could still enjoy, like I said, it's not completely deterministic. Right, yeah. But, I'm just saying, like, but I... But it, it yeah. influences my opinion yeah. of a song um, that it, it, it would improve it. Yeah. I don't think it would. I'd be like, "Oh, this song sucks" because it wouldn't make a good chart. Yeah, it it can only improve. It can't like yeah, degrade. That's true. Yeah. Um, I think we got time for one more question, maybe. Um. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. Um. Actually, this one is very related to the to our discussion earlier. Zephyr one hundred and one asks, uh, "What is the best way to get DDR rounds in if you can't go to the arcade and have a very janky soft pad?" I buy hard pad. I guess. <laughs> I mean, uh, so actually, there is the option of. Um, Kyle Ward's new thing, Step Maniacs. Yeah. Those are becoming, those are, are being mass produced now. And uh, if you don't like Step Maniacs, um, you can hook it up to Step Mania without the X. And uh, there's those, that. There's the impulse platforms expensive. that are coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's some options. Um, and actually, it seems like yeah, the impulse platforms too. It seems like there, there's actually a, a kind of an up uptick in um, home options that are not from Konami. Yeah, it should be so within the next couple months uh hopefully. i would call uh, I'll, I'll call these garage versions and not home versions yeah i think <laughs> yeah. that's a good way of that is a good way of putting it is you're not gonna yeah. you can't put it on like well you probably couldn't put a soft pad on the top floor of your house anyway I mean, but like, you can't connect it to your tv yeah you can't do a tv yeah but, but i think uh if you can't go to the arcade very often at least like try and maximize your time there and we've talked about this before but Make, making goals mm-hmm. yeah but also like learning step mania stuff beforehand don't just like go to the arcade any willy-nilly time like if you want to get get a lot of rounds in like try to figure out when it's not as busy um yeah um yeah maybe one more yeah really quick time. sure uh, uh so yes uh vgn zencom asks uh are there any Recent charts that you think could have been charted better? Recent charts. I mean, I think there's nothing's come out. Himawari Sunset was it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going to mention that. I mean, I'm not going to mention I, I, Demion. I think. I think <laughs> recent, Demi. as in like Ace. No, oh, maybe. Yeah. Um, are there Are there any uh, songs that you would like to see a challenge chart for? Maybe. 
I mean, I'm gonna have to look look through the song list now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's that's a there. There's a lot of songs that I, I hear them and I'm like, man, that's I th- I think I played Cleopatraism on or something on you beat and I was like, man, this would make like a cool seventeen. Yeah, mm-hmm. or maybe like a a shock hero chart or something. Yeah, well, that's no. I think uh, <laughs> Dance from the Flare comes to mind. Oh yeah, that's one thing totally. that I would have I would have liked to have seen that be higher than a thirteen. It has a lot of potential. Yeah, I would or, like to see an LED Dancer in the Flare remix. Yeah, with like a it's harder very chart. specific Wait, or Wouldn't like cool? even like sterling silver the or, yeah um, or, yeah just the original the remix is actually pretty fun but the the I original mean, has a lot to the, so more that you could do with it yeah yeah there's a lot of things that have expert charts that need challenge charts yeah um it's a big question yes yeah, yeah. it's, it's, we, we don't have to think of anything right away <laughs> yeah you could tweet it later yeah, if you yeah, want to yeah. we'll, we'll tweet about later all right so the uh tap set of the week jeff why don't you go first what'd you pick uh, my pick for the week is Scorching Moon by Sean the Horny Master. Ooh. Um, it's from, so it was from a home version. I forget which one. Extreme? I think it was a, Extreme CS. USCS? Sounds like. Or Extreme JP. Was it one of the, no. I think it was actually DDR Party Collection. Oh, yeah, that sounds right. Well, anyway, what, it was, what, what folder is it in? It's in the Supernova. <laughs> I was getting to that. It's okay. in the Supernova folder. It was ported over. Like, it came out on a home version, then got ported in when all the home version songs came into Supernova. That's why the Supernova folder is huge. Um, but it's basically, it's like a 10. Uh, it's harder than a 10. It's very <laughs> technical. Uh, it's got some weird rhythms, and it's really funky, and I like it. Roger? Yeah, I'm going to choose Across World by Roy's Challenge. Or you can play any of the other charts as well. Um, the challenge is, is pretty tough. It's a 14, and I, th- I think it's it's one of those unassuming songs. You play it, and you, you see 14, you see you hear the song, and you're like, ah, that's it's just going to be mostly stream with maybe a few, <laughs> uh, a few 16th notes. But it's got like a really tricky jump part, like a jump spam part where you're just you're jumping like B11 or something, and yeah. uh, some 16th stream, some stuff stuff like that. So check it out. It's a really good song too. One of my favorites. So my pick is Printemps by Crispy Joybox. Um, it's from DDR 2013, and uh, it's a 13. And I think, in my opinion, I think it's a pretty tricky 13. It's uh, if you're bad at drills, it's a good song to practice drills on. Um, and it's kind of a weird BPM too, 168 BPM, which is you know sort of in that weird spot between 140, 150, and 180. So um, yeah, I, th- I think it's a great chart. I play it all the time. It's yeah, it's I, I I played it a lot to try and deal with my drill problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of worked. Did it help? <laughs> it's Chaos Eater Jr. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a nice song, too. It's easy to hear. It is. Okay. Chris, uh, yeah, it's box is uh, very nice. And congratulations to all the uh, to everybody who sent in their uh, sets of the week. We really love seeing it, and we're going to continue to retweet you. Um, and also, congratulations to Prince David for getting 280 characters on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, a good set of the week. Yeah, so we, we had uh, Suzuka Ama... Jeff should have read this one. Amasaka uh, had sent in their scores um, and got a triple A of Scarlet Moon. Almost. Oh, bummer. And uh, Hopeless um, played on doubles. A couple no bar songs. Um, Pika Boy managed to pass everything, especially from recovering, some from from some foot pain. I, uh, Respect that. I'm work, working through that myself. <laughs> yeah, we gotta do an injury episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we will. Maybe, maybe next week after I might be able to play again. Uh, Jeff Sledjanowski, um, pumpkin emoji. Um, very spooky by those uh, one great, it looks like, each on a Mono Giltson electronic trick or treat. And uh, model, treat. model FT2 Miracle got to Ace for Aces, which is pretty good. Ooh. So, uh, did our set of the week and got to Ace for Aces. Cool. It's a good time to do it. Yeah. Congratulations on passing Endymion on, on uh, Basic. Yeah, and more people. Uh, Legend Max uh, played on Double. Uh, Rod, who's been doing it every week. Papa bless the boys. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Astro Ferris, who we answered a question from earlier. And man, there's a lot of people from Fresno. Shout out to Fresno. Shout out to Fresno. Like, honestly, like four or five of these people are at least from <laughs> Fresno. Uh, Louie, too. Oh, great. Um, yeah. And 2AI as well. All right. Oh, 2A, I played all the sets of the week. 
that we've done from the past four episodes. Oh, great, yeah. At keep once. it up. Sets of the month. Special yes. special prize for all anybody. All sets who... of the weeks. <laughs> special prize to anybody who plays all the sets of the weeks. And if you could fit all of the songs into one set, then, man, we really have to talk. <laughs> you're, you're a magician. Event mode. You get a huge, no, not even. <laughs> Uh, All right, I think with that, we're going to wrap it up. So uh, thanks, everyone, for listening, and thank Thank you you for for playing. playing.